Hey guys, Ross here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the things I wish I knew when I started my video production company. Now if you're new around here, please hit the subscribe button. Over half of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. In most cases, it's up to 80% of people. So we would really, really appreciate that if you could hit the subscribe button and it's completely free to do so. It doesn't cost you a penny. Now if you think that creating the most amazing pieces of content along with the best equipment you can possibly have and just undercutting the market will get you the most amount of business, you're wrong. But having the business knowledge and expanding on that will be the reason your business succeeds. Now a very quick introduction to me. My name is Ross Welch and I own a video production company here in the UK. Within a couple of years, we were able to sign people onto retainers, scaled our business way into the six figures. I employ a team of people. I've got a studio downstairs as well and I get to travel the world working for some amazing clients for household brands such as Monster Energy, Team GB, Sixth Car Rental, Black & Decker, DeWalt, the list goes goes on and on and I feel so privileged to be in this situation. But before we even get into my top 10, I can guarantee you I am not the best filmmaker there is in the world, nor the best photographer for that matter of fact. But I understand business and that's the most powerful thing that you can have because it doesn't matter about your creative ability. As much as we'd like to think it does, it really doesn't. And it's the business knowledge, the things that I'm gonna teach you on this channel, they're the things that are gonna make the biggest impact to creating a stable video production business that has clients and can grow it to beyond what you thought was even possible. Now over this video, I'm gonna break it down into my top 10 things that I really wish I knew and would have helped me if I had done those things a lot sooner as well in my journey. And I'm gonna break those things down to you, starting at number 10, working my way up to number one. So grab a pen and paper and let's get right into this. Now at number 10, complacency is a business killer. I know so many people through my mentoring that literally start their businesses with the best intentions, they're a little bit hungry, they've got this desire, they, they reach a few people, they get a couple of small jobs, and then the old habits set in. They sit by the phone waiting for it to ring with their dream client, they wait for work to come to them, and often that ends in a failing business, or we have to come in and try and pick up the pieces, and the first thing I do on day one with these people is outreach, outreach, outreach. You've got to be on top of this, you've got to be going out there and getting the work. It's not about who you know, but it's about who knows you. And it's about putting your business and your brand in front of as many people as you can on as many different platforms. And that was one of the things that I was guilty of when I started my business. And I still see it with so many creatives that are starting out and building businesses or even successful businesses for that matter that have just become a little bit complacent and aren't as hungry as perhaps they once were. We just need to relight that fire and get into it. And that's definitely something I wish I didn't have that little period where I just kind of just fell into this emptiness, this empty blank space. I wish I just carried on pushing because I would be where I'm at now much quicker if that was the case. Number nine, it's the power of having an email and a business line. Like literally this amazes me how anyone thinks it's acceptable at all to have a business at gmail or business at hotmail.com account take your business seriously like and and i said i'm saying this to you guys saying it's so ridiculous now looking back on it and this was me this was me for years i had perspective studios uk at gmail.com how i got any work is completely beyond me and i'll tell you what the second i switched to a proper email address such as a name at you know web address business address.co.uk for my emails, it was a game changer. People started to take me so much more seriously as well. So that's a number one factor. And that's the same with your phone numbers as well. If you're listing your mobile on your website, what does that say about you and your brand image? Are you trying to portray that as, hey, I'm just a one man band, hey, I'm just a freelancer, or do you want to grow a video production company? If you want the latter, then start to think about business lines and things like that, whether that's going into a house or there's plenty of apps and things online where you can actually divert it so you've got a business number, you know, an area code number followed by a, a fixed business address that will then come through to your mobile. So there's lots of options out there, but those two things are really, really important. Number eight is the fact that cheap 
isn't always good. And I used to think that I would always have to, um, I felt very uncertain. I suffered a lot from imposter syndrome, okay, where I felt like I just wasn't good enough. And I would be speaking to these people when I started out and I would be constantly halving my prices or dropping my price down to be as cheap and as competitive as I possibly could do. And that was just so bad for my business. And it was a really, really hard place to get out of because I'd become so accustomed as to going into a meeting or speaking with a customer and in my head thinking, oh, they're not gonna wanna pay for me. They're not, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna see the value of my services. Or I wasn't even thinking that. I was just thinking they're not gonna want me and I'm really desperate for the work. So I'm just gonna give them a big discount and they're gonna love that. And that is just a, a road that just leads to, to nowhere and you really need to snap out of that. So cheap isn't always good. And let me give you an analogy. Someone told me this and this is what made me up my prices as well was if you're going to buy a car and you're looking at the same model of car from three different places, someone gives you a really, really cheap price, perhaps like a thousand pound. Someone at the top end gives you a price for the same car, same mileage, you know, that kind of thing for 20,000 pound. And then someone gives you one for around about 15,000 pound. You're gonna think that the cheap guy is just too cheap, right? You're not gonna go with him because you're gonna think, well, there's loads of problems with the car, probably not gonna buy that. That's a bad route to go to it down. So now you're looking at the two people that are priced highly, but are competitive with each other. Now your budget might not be as much as the 20,000 pound one, but what you should be doing is going to speak to the people at the 20,000 pound car place and then asking them if they can reduce that perhaps down to 15. That's the position you wanna be in. You wanna be at the top level and where you can negotiate because you've got room to negotiate. If you're only charging minimal fees for your services, you can't discount that very far without it having a serious impact on your business, okay? So I'm not saying, you know, just go, you know, go into work tomorrow and triple your prices, but they are things to think about. Your prices should reflect everything you've got going on, your equipment, your insurances, your building, where your office is, and all of those things, staff, and that's where you can start to scale these things, but they need to be legitimate, okay? You can't just start charging a thousand pound a day if your work and portfolio doesn't keep up with that. But do keep in mind that cheap, isn't always good and you don't always want to be the lowest price that's that's a matter of fact now number seven i've called this don't count your chickens before they've hatched because this industry is full of liars basically you are going to get promised the absolute world by a hundred clients and i can guarantee you those things won't fall through now when i started out and again the people that i mentor I, I see this a lot of the time with them as well where they'll have opportunities we all have opportunities because they're an opportunity for our business to grow it's an opportunity to make our dreams a reality that's why we all love opportunities but you will be faced with so many projects that come in at that take so much time or they keep getting pushed back or they fail and they don't come to any fruition for whatever reason you know we're working on one project at the moment that we've, we've been in the pipeline for over six months now there's 10 grand sitting there and what i mean by about don't count your chickens before they hatch is because you cannot build a business based on predicted work even if someone says oh Ross, you know, I promise you that you're gonna get this job, you know, we just need to keep moving this back or whatever. You cannot run a business thinking, well, it's okay, uh, I can buy this bit of equipment or I can do this thing or I can invest my money here because I've got this money coming in. Until that money hits your bank account, you, it's not yours. And trust me, from experience, that's why you can't count those chickens, you can't count your money before it's in your bank account is because things do fall through and that's no way to run a business. But starting out, I do see this time and time again where people will kind of forecast jobs that they've got coming in and they'll base business decisions around that. And as a result, those jobs won't come in, which happens time and time again. You, know, you can trust me on that one. And then as a result, it leaves them in a really bad situation. So always wait until that money is in your account. If you need to buy a certain piece of equipment for a job that you've got coming up, then ask for a 50% deposit up front and then use that money to invest into that piece of equipment for that job. I don't know, you might need an, an extra microphone perhaps if you're doing a two person interview or, or anything like that. So please, please, please don't run your businesses forecasting what might happen in the future. Just count the money that's in your bank account and work your business decisions based on that opposed to what might come in because it might never happen. Number six is something I put off for so long, much, much longer because here's what it is. 
it's setting a business plan. Now, I instantly didn't really understand what a business plan was. And then when I learned roughly what a business plan was, I was kind of like, well, the reason that these people who write business plans, their businesses aren't succeeding is because they spend all this time creating these plans and business plans and not spending enough time working on their business. How foolish of me to think that. And it's not until I actually had a mentor later on that taught me the importance of a business plan and I was made to sit down there and do it that I realized, oh shit, this is a really, really powerful piece of document. And there's a saying, if it's not written down, it doesn't exist. And I saw this actually personally speaking to a person as part of my academy the other day, I was speaking with him and, and he said, you know, he's got a good vision of where he wants his business to go. And I said, have you got this written down? And he said, no. And I said, okay, right, well, let's write that down together right now. And he almost couldn't write down any part of that whatsoever. And it's really interesting. And I was in that same exact same position when I started out. I didn't know what to write. I couldn't articulate that onto paper. What did that look like? What was the end goal? And it really made me realize how much of my business I didn't know, but I went along thinking I did know it. Business plans don't need to be pages and pages long. Just where are you going? What direction? What is the goal? What is the purpose of your business? Where do you want that to go? Because otherwise, how do you know if your business is going in the, in the right direction? Sure, you might have a gut feeling that you know, our business is going in the right direction, but if you don't know what direction that ship is sailing in, then how do you know if it's the right one or not? So doing a very simple business plan, just listing out what your goals are, how you're gonna get there, what your business stands for in terms of its values, how you want your clients to feel, and what type of clients do you want? Have a think about those things. And honestly, it's so, so important. And, I, and it's something that I actively put off and I thought that people that did it were just absolutely up themselves and you know had no chance. And uh, here I am now telling you <laughs> how important a business plan is to the success of your business. And uh, that really helps with my next point, which is point number five, which is how to say no. Now, you're no doubt gonna get bombarded with people that will say, hey, uh, can you film this video for me? And um, uh, we haven't got any budget because we're a startup company and we don't have any money at the moment, but this is gonna look great for your portfolio. And actually, you know what? What's also good is when we get our business off the ground, we're gonna work with you lots and we're gonna send you loads of money. Does that make you happy? Yeah, cool, so you can film this for free for me, yeah? And you're like, okay, yeah, well, I can see some value in that. Now. I'm not gonna disregard that completely, okay? Because there are opportunities and there are times where you do have to take that gamble. You do have to say, yeah, do you know what? I, I think this might pay off. More often than not, it doesn't pay off. Now, this is where the business plan comes in because let's say you want to focus on product filmmaking, okay, let's say. Now, when someone comes to you and they say, um, you know, hey Ross, um, I want you to come and take photos of my hotel or my interior bathroom. If that's not the way, the direction that you want your business to go, you've got a lot more power to say no because there's, there might be opportunity to more business within that particular area. But if it's not the direction you wanna push your business in, then say no because it doesn't get you towards your end goal. Whereas if someone in the product industry world said, hey, look, um, you know, we're a startup company, we, you know, we see an opportunity here, X, Y, Z, we would ask, you know, can you do the first one for free perhaps or some kind of swap deal or something like that? It makes more sense to make the gamble there rather than making the gamble with this company because at least this is in the direction that you're pushing your business, okay? Does that make sense? Because if we're pushing in that direction, then that gamble, if it pays off, is gonna put you where you wanna be. If this gamble pays off, sure, you might get a couple of extra quid, but it's pulling you in the completely a different direction, okay? So there's just some things to think about. Saying no is really hard. I struggle with it massively, I really do. Even now, I, I really don't like to say no. My business plan has really helped with that and if you can learn to say no, your business is gonna succeed much quicker and at a much quicker rate because you're gonna work on you and you're gonna work on where you wanna get to opposed to just being pulled in a million directions for people with fake promises or things that are uncontrollable outside of their hands. I speak with loads of people who aren't a decision maker within a business telling me how you know, we should work together and stuff. And then you have a conversation with the decision maker and you realize it's never been on the cards anyway, you know? So um, unfortunately that is things that you'll be faced with. Feel free to say no if you think it's not gonna benefit your business in any way.
Okay, so now we're moving into the top five things I wish I knew when I started my video production company, the things that I wish I did sooner. We've already covered a huge amount. I hope you're finding this insanely valuable. Please let me know in the comments below if there's anything you want me to expand on more or create a specific video on. I'm completely here to help the people who are subscribed to me. That's the whole purpose of this. I'm not just making content to boost my ego or anything like that. I want to genuinely help people and I can only do that if you tell me the things that you want to learn. So please feel free to drop some notes in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video. It would be greatly appreciated. And like I said, almost 80% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So please do do that. It would mean the world to us. And we're trying to grow this community so we can help more people. Now, number four is going to be a controversial one. Brace yourselves because some of you are not going to like this. Equipment doesn't matter. And I can already feel, I can already feel the daggers in my back right now of just people being like, what do you mean? Equipment does matter. It's about having the best quality content. Everyone has the best quality content. Selling your services as high quality content is no longer a thing. It's non-existent because everyone is doing it. And what do you think a client expects? They're not coming to you because they expect low quality content. No, of course, they expect the highest quality content. So you can't sell your business services based on high quality, cheap prices. It doesn't work. Whereas having the business knowledge to run and grow a successful business, that is the key to a business being stable and growing to endless possibilities. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Again, I started the video by saying, I'm not the most creative person, I'm not the best camera person, for sure, but I've been able to build and scale a six-figure business, employ a team of people, have a studio, and elaborate on all of those things. And that's not a brag, that's just highlighting the importance of business knowledge over creative ability and equipment. So let me just break this down just a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna give you some slack, okay? Yes, equipment can definitely help you do a better job. And if your quality of your work is better, then generally speaking, you more clients will be more willing to work for you. If I had a really crappy portfolio, would they want to work for me at my current rate? No, they wouldn't, okay? So sometimes your portfolio does back up your current rate. However, if I give a amateur filmmaker a 50,000 pound red camera and go out and, and get them to create some showreel quality content, could they do that? No, definitely not. So there is a complete mix here and I see people rushing to invest their money in the latest equipment before really investing in their own knowledge or before really investing in their own you know, craft, the, the craft of filmmaking and learning all the foundational things and actually becoming a better filmmaker than their camera to the point where they know they need to upgrade their camera because they've far exceeded the limitations of that camera. They're the people that generally will do the best. And look, I can't stress enough, investing your money and time into learning about the business side of things, how businesses operate. Because yes, yeah, sure, we can create quality film content, there's millions of businesses out there like yours that can do that. But what a lot of those people lack is actually listening and understanding what the businesses are asking for. Again, they're not coming to you because they think you can do a shit job. They're coming to you because they clearly like your work. But it's about understanding how businesses work. It's understanding how different industries work and businesses within those industries, how startups differ, differ to SMEs, which differ to global clients, which, uh, which are different to you know, multi-billion and trillion pound clients. And we work with a whole range of people from people who turn over billions of pounds a year, all the way to people who turn over very small amounts or are perhaps a negative because they're just a startup at the moment. So dealing with those people individually and having the best chance of success with every person I have a meeting with, that's how we can build a stable business. So don't always rush to getting the best equipment, to spending and wasting all of your money in the equipment, because ultimately it doesn't matter. If you are an amazing filmmaker, and this should resonate with those people who are actually very good filmmakers, I can give you a camera that costs a hundred pound, a hundred dollars, whatever, and you will still be able to create a really cool piece of social content. I guarantee that because you will know how a camera works, you'll know the limitations, you'll know the things to look out for, you'll know how you can get the most out of that camera. But so many people think, hey, buying a new camera, I can charge more, I can get more clients. Then they sit there with their lovely new camera and they're like, but I've got no work. How am I gonna pay for this? 
And I swear to God, that is literally what happens time and time again. So please, please, please don't fall into that. Don't see people who pose pictures on uh, YouTube about like, hey, look at my red camera. Honestly, those things don't mean anything, okay? It's about what you can do with the camera and it's also about having the business knowledge. People, i.e. businesses and customers, they buy your services before you turn up to the shoe. So most of the time, they don't even know what camera you've got, nor do they even care. They don't know if an FS6 is better than FS7 or an FS5 or an FX whatever. You know, they literally do not care. They've seen your work, they've, they've had a negotiation with price, they know that you're the best person because you've handled that meeting really well. That's how you get business because you understand the business side of filmmaking, not just, hey, I've got a really good camera because I tell you what, they just don't care about that. So please, please, please keep this in mind when you're building your business. It's something that I wish that I knew a lot sooner and I see so many people doing exactly the same thing, investing all of their money into equipment and then effectively don't have any work at the end of it. Why? Because they haven't been able to scale their business to that level quick enough as well. Now we're coming towards the end of this video and number three is my biggest regret in business to date. This is something that I wish I understood and I wish I never did, okay? And that was, we spent almost 5,000 pound on a shiny new website because we thought, oh, if we've got a good website, we're gonna look really cool and we're gonna get loads of business through it. We spent that money and we've to date probably had pretty much zero work through the website. And it's very easy to think that if you have all of these like shiny new things that your business is going to be successful because you see successful uh, you know, production companies and you think, wow, what do they have? Oh, they've got a really nice website. Oh, we must need a nice website and all those things. You don't need to spend an absolute fortune on this stuff. You can use places like Wix, Squarespace, many other sites on there to build your own for very cheap. Now, I am an absolute advocate of letting people do what they're good at as well and that your time is equally valuable. So depending on what point you are in business, I would change my advice slightly. If you currently have a video production company and you're trying to scale it, but you have a nice amount of income at the moment, then you need to question how best is your time spent. You might want to outsource that to someone and you can find people on Fiverr or you can, you can find web designers to do this. But I would say Instagram as a platform, as your portfolio, that's gonna be your business card. Every time we speak to people, we're sending them through to our Instagram page. We're showcasing our work that way, or we're sharing with them over email our specific videos, not just our website. I do think a website is important, but I don't think you should throw loads of money at it because it's generally, uh, we don't see any return on that. Someone else might say something different, but we generally, and again, I'm only ever gonna tell you things that I have had personal experience in. I'm not gonna share anything just because I think it sounds good or because it makes content. I'm only giving you things that I've done within my production company, the good and the bad, to try and help you guys create successful businesses too. So if I were you, I would have spent a small amount on a website, I would then take the rest of that marketing budget or that money, and I would spend it in ads, outreach, you know, people, manpower, portfolio, those kind of things, invest in projects and those kind of things, because that's gonna see you a much better return than spending so much money into a website and that you're probably not gonna get any results on whatsoever. Or you still have to do the outreach, by the way. People don't just, they might search for a video production company, sure. Like, though, there is some value in that. Like, I do understand it. But as an amateur, you can only throw so much money at this kind of stuff. And your money is much better spent by outreach into businesses, pointing them to your Instagram page, pointing them to your portfolio and having a very simple website to back up these things rather than spending thousands of pounds on it. And that's why it's one of my biggest regrets for spending that much money on my website. Now, number two is probably one of my most underrated points that I think I really overlooked or perhaps got lost. And that is to really have a strong reason why, why your business exists. And let me, let me explain this a little bit more because when everyone starts a business, I think they start out ultimately with the best intentions. Most people want a business because they really enjoy that line of work. So as filmmakers, I'm sure you're the same as me. You get up every day, you love work, work is always different, you can use your creative mindset and, and it's great, okay? And that's why I wanted to work in this industry because I loved it, I was passionate about it. Like I wanted to enjoy my job and that's, that's, that was my purpose, why? What then happens is when you then start your business and then you do have a job, you know, you've created a job and you, you ha you've kind of achieved that reason why, it then starts to move very much into like 
finances and building a business based on like, I want a million pound company or I want those things. And I see a lot of people who will focus on the reason why is because they want to be a millionaire, they want lots of money, they want to have money to do nice things with and they base the whole business around money and finances and that was the same for me i'm not going to lie about it i won't hide behind it i started off with good intentions i really wanted a job i enjoyed i created that job for myself great i'm enjoying life what next well i guess i just want lots of money be rich buy a really nice house buy a nice car buy all these things and the reason that that is so detrimental to a business is because if your business is making money then you're going to be motivated to get out of bed in the morning you're going to want to continue making money because your reason for your business existing is to make as much money as possible right now what happens when your business takes a slight downturn maybe the current climate starts you know making things go downhill ever so slightly if your business is losing money or it's not making money as quickly as you want it to you're going to really struggle to get out of bed in the morning because all of a sudden your reason why your business exists is dwindling, it's disappearing, it's, dissipa- it's, it's dispersing into the atmosphere. It almost doesn't exist because your business is going against the reason why it exists and therefore, well, then you're not gonna be excited about it whatsoever. So you really need to build a compelling reason why. Why is it that you want that money? And, and money, you shouldn't be ashamed of this as well. And I'm, I'm, I strongly believe this. Society says that if you want more in life, then that's a bad thing. And the reason society says that is because often the people who you know, the naysayers, the people that say bad things about you wanting more in life and you should be happy with what you've got. Sure, you should be happy with what you've got, but there's no reason that you can't want more because the people who are telling you that you shouldn't have more are generally people who can't go outside their own comfort zone to go and get those things themselves and actually invest in themselves or make the sacrifice. Business is a sacrifice. It's like going to the gym, right? If you wanna get fit, you have to sacrifice the hard work. You need to have the determination for that reason why, the end goal, your desire. Now, there's so many people that will say, you know, bad things about people that go to the gym. Well, I don't wanna be skinny anyway, or you know, all those things. And it's generally, they're, they're not actually saying negative things about the person. It's almost acting as a mirror. They're just saying the things that they really you know, to make themselves feel better, that they can't overcome, you know, they can't bring up the willpower because they don't have enough desire to put in the sacrifice that it takes to get fitter, perhaps, you know, it's a really easy analogy, the fitness world, but it becomes, um, but it's exactly the same for our own industry as well in filmmaking and having a compelling reason why. So if you want nice things, a nice house, you know, I'm fortunate that I have a nice house, I have a great work-life balance as well, that's really important. We're about to be parents, which is super, super exciting. I want to provide that child with everything that I could possibly have ever wanted as, as a kid, while still remaining humble and grounded, and I'm sure that's going to be a bit tricky, but I have a nice car, you know, I've been recently looking into buying a new Porsche and all of these things, and I feel fortunate to be in that situation, but that's because I've put the hard work in to get here and they haven't been materialistic goals, they've just been little checkpoints that have happened along the way. My compelling reason why has always been to do with family related things, things I'm passionate about, so um, you know, animal welfare, things like that, helping the homeless, being involved with charity work, helping people as well. That was the reason I started my academy in the first place was because it was something I thought would be really cool to do. Lockdown gave me the opportunity to do that and as a result, I've found this new sense of fulfillment that I never really had before. Filming videos is amazing. Like I love, I love work. I love, a, you know, I have a great work-life balance. I love work, but I got this new sense of fulfillment for helping people. Hence why I'm, you know, trying to grow my YouTube channel as well. And I, I love doing this. So having a compelling reason why will really help you get out of bed in the morning on a dark winter's morning when you don't want to get up. If your reason why is strong enough, you know. Logic says it best, sacrifice my 20s so that money isn't a thing now. That's the thing, it's a bit of sacrifice, hopefully short term, and I can help you get there as quick as you possibly can. Sacrifice those things short term so that you can reap those benefits and and have an amazing business, but you need a compelling reason why. Congratulations, we've made it to tip number one. I hope you've had so much value over the course of this video and these are my personal experiences and also the things I see time and time again within my academy and people doing and they're definitely the things that I pull out first. So please do apply these. If you're enjoying the video, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. It honestly does mean the world when we're trying to grow this channel and help as many people as possible. Now, number one, the things I wish I did sooner is invest 
in my learning. For us, schooling is free for the most part, okay? We don't pay to go to school. We might have to pay to go to university, but then you can generally write off student debts after a certain period of time. But investing in your actual learning is something that's quite hard to do, especially as a business owner, as a filmmaker, is to spend money investing in that side of things. Now, I have spent thousands and thousands of pounds in seminars, uh, weekend sessions, events, mentoring personally, one-to-one -one sessions, all to help grow my business. Now, the only downside to all of that is the fact that there's no one in our industry doing those kind of things, and certainly not the business side. Sure about the creative side, but we've already established. And if you want to, make, if you want to make money and create a successful business, you need to understand the business knowledge. That's what's going to help you have a successful production company, not just your creative ability. So for me, I had to learn from people in all different industries to try and take things that they were doing really well, apply them to my own business, and see what works. And that way is a very long way of doing things because it's trial and error, and that's. That's why I made it my mission to try and help as many people as I can because I'm in the same industry so it makes sense to learn from someone who's in a slightly better position than, than what you're currently in. Now this doesn't mean that you have to spend thousands of pounds by all, by all means like uh, the most I've spent is probably about three thousand uh, pound in one go for a uh, for an event but the value that I got out of that event and everything's hypothetical here right you know sure if I walk into that event spend three thousand pound don't learn a single thing was it worth it? No, but if I walked into that event, which I did, spent the money, invested in my learning and knowledge and applied that then to my business and then was able to see huge benefits, let's say I walk out of that event a millionaire in a year's time, is that money worth it? Yeah, sure, who wouldn't spend a thousand, who wouldn't spend a few thousand pounds to get a million back? So everything has potential and it's kind of trying to weigh those things up. And this all comes down to accountability. There's only so much stuff that I can teach you on YouTube for free before people just don't implement it because there's no accountability there. It's easy come, easy go. It hasn't cost you anything to learn everything you've learned within this video so far, which is heaps of valuable information. But if I had made you pay me 100 or 500 pound at the start of this video, you would go away and you would implement every single thing I said to make sure you got a return on investment, okay? And that's how these things generally work. You invest into mentors, you invest into online courses, coaching, things like that to help you get to where you wanna be in a fraction of the time by someone who's generally done it in your industry. And then it also keeps you accountable as well because you've invested into that. And again, you don't have to spend thousands of pounds. I mean, our course launched for like $200 and we often fluctuate the prices up and down. So we're not talking bank breaking money, but enough to keep you accountable so that you actually go away and implement these things into your business. And every time I've stopped investing in my learning through anyone, is when my business has started to plateau a little bit or the increase hasn't been anywhere near as much as it should be. Every time I invest into, right, I'm gonna to listen to this guy because I think he's got something that can add benefit to my business, add value to my business, and I'm gonna grow because of this. I invest in that and then I walk away from that session and I do everything that person has told me to a T. And every time I do that and every time I apply that to my business, my business has started to spike back up again. So investing in mentors is something I wish I did a lot quicker at the start, invested in my own learning. I think they, a lot of people don't do it at the start because they generally just see so many fake people online and that makes it really hard to push through as a genu genuine person. They see all these fake people online and they just think it's just all crap. Why would someone share their ideas with you? And if you've ever thought that, then just think about why you might give a homeless person a sandwich or you might give them some money. Why would you do that? Why? Why would you give your money to someone else? Fulfillment, helping people. That's the reasons I do this is, look, there are millions of video production companies out there. I'm not the only one. Sure, I know that. I know I'm not the only one. There's tons in this area. But I'm able to implement these things better than what they're able to do. And often to help people, my academy members are spread all over the country. So no one's treading on each other's toes. And I'm all about community and collaboration over competition because we've built an amazing network of like-minded indiv individuals that help each other. They help them when they've got a problem client, they help them to get work, and it's an amazing thing to see and be a part of, and that's my way of working, and that's what I want to help as many people with as I possibly can. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. These are honestly, 
the 10 things I really wish I knew sooner. They're the things I wish I knew when I started my production company. And if you apply even just some of these, you're gonna hear, you're gonna see great returns with your businesses. Let me know again in the comments what you thought. If there's any suggestions for videos, I'm more than happy to do specific content. I wanna listen to my audience. I wanna build a community where we all collaborate with each other. So let me know what you wanna see and I will create some videos on that. Until the next time, peace.